Good day everyone, I'm Beryl Sabion and with me is Mr. Arjo Escalante and Paolo Pabayo and we will be discussing about the American psychologist David Osobel. David Osobel or David Paul Osobel was an American psychologist born in October 25, 1918. His most significant contribution to the field of educational psychology, cognitive science, and science education learning was on the development and research on advanced organizers. David Osobel theorized that the people acquire knowledge primarily by being exposed directly to it rather than through discovery. The most important single factor influencing learning is what the learner already knows. This led Osobel to develop an interesting theory of meaningful learning and advanced organizers. Like what I said earlier, Osabel believes that the learning of a new knowledge relies on what we already know. That is, construction of knowledge begin with our observation and recognition of events and objects through concepts we already have. Osabel also stresses the importance of reception rather than discovery learning and meaningful rather than rote learning. Osabel was influenced by the teachings of Jean Piaget. Similar to Piaget's idea of conceptual schemes, Osobel related this to his explanation of how people acquire knowledge. Good day, classmates. So, I was assigned to discuss about Osobel's theory of learning. So, uh, my topic is about meaningful learning. Osobel's theory also focuses on meaningful learning. According to his theory, to learn meaningfully indicates that a learner must relate new knowledge to relevant concepts. They also know that new knowledge must interact with the learner's knowledge structure. Meaningful learning can be contrasted with the root learning because for Esobel, he believed in the meaningful learning as, also, as opposite to root memory. Memo, for example, meaningful learning can be transferred to the learner, for example, in the form of essay. Because for root learning, it is just a pure memorization of the lesson. So it is just repeated. After the exam, it will gone. So it has the privilege of being transferred to long-term memory. So that is for Esobel's um, meaningful learning. So it can be transferred to the learner in a long-term memory. The crucial element in meaningful learning is now the new information integrate the old knowledge structure. So how the meaningful learning can be transferred into a new learning process. Because for Isabel, uh, the most crucial part is the transformation of the learner. So according to him, uh, knowledge is hierarchically organized. What do you mean by hierarchy? Meaning that it is already structured. For example, the learner must anchor to what is being known knowledge so there will be already knowledge beforehand so the learner must must know and understand how to connect this knowledge to the previous knowledge that he learned he or she that he learned okay so in the graph you can see the graph there's a creative production so the learner creates a memory so there's a creative production and then after the creative production, the learner has this what you call meaningful learning. So how the minds create and it will transfer to how, how the learners find meaning in that creative production. So that is why it is called meaningful learning. In meaningful learning, it requires that there must be a well-organized relevant knowledge. There must be a knowledge that the learner must be able to integrate second is emotional commitment to integrate new existing knowledge to old one 
So how this new knowledge will integrate into an existing knowledge? So number three, conceptualize clear subject matter. So how this concept would con con conceptualize the learner's knowledge? After the continuum, there must be a root learning. So the result of root learning is opposite of what you call a meaningful learning. Because for root learning, the result is little knowledge or no knowledge at all. Or there's no emotional commitment to transfer to the old knowledge from the new one. Other one is poor organized subject matter. So the learner never understand his or her lesson. So for Esobel advocates the use of advanced organizer as a link to new learning material. So there is this what we call advanced organizers. What is this advanced organizers? It is where the knowledge must be transferred to another new form of knowledge. So does this satisfies two condition. Number one is the students must process and integrate information into an into an effective organizer. So the student must process the knowledge into his or her learning information. It never stops. So it, there must be a continuum. That's what for Isabel is trying to understand to us. Number two is the comparative and expository. For Isabel, knowledge is comparative and expository. What do you mean by comparative? Comparative is that the learner must able to understand and integrate the knowledge that he has he or she must gain from the lesson and it must be expository what do you mean by expository there must be this integration of knowledge from the classroom to the society i will be discussing to you the advanced organizers or the categories of advanced organizers the expository and comparative organizers Expository organizers, in contrast, expository organizers provide new knowledge that students will need to understand the upcoming information. So, in this situation, the teacher presents a new lesson or a topic that has never been discussed. It will help students make connections of what they have learned in the past or what they have known. Like, for example, so let's put in a situation that COVID-19 has not yet discussed by a teacher. So the student should be asked, what is COVID-19? How long will COVID-19 last? And the symptoms of the COVID-19. So through this, you can connect what you have known about the disease to the effects of the coronavirus disease. And then, the comparative organizers. So a comparative organizer is also used both to integrate as well as discriminate. So it integrates new ideas with basically similar concepts in cognitive structure, as well as increased discriminability between new and existing ideas which are essentially different from... I Sorry different but confusingly similar. So this organizer is used when you are familiar to the topic or when the information can be integrated with your prior knowledge. Like for example, so if you have knowledge about the SARS or the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and there is new information about COVID-19. So you will be able to compare or contrast them to understand their similarities and differences. Okay, so let's proceed. The Osobel's model of meaningful learning. So Osobel's theories consist of three phases. These are the main elements of Osobel uh, teaching method. So in phase one, the advanced organizers. Phase two, the presentation of learning task or 
material, and phase 3, strengthening cognitive organization. So in phase 1, it will clarify the aims of the lesson. Present the advanced organizer and prompting awareness of relevant knowledge and experience. And then in phase, in phase 2, did the teacher presents the learning task in systematic order. So there is a discussion in each and every aspect one by one with through interaction between the teacher and the student. And in uh, phase 3, there is uh, comparing and contracting, uh, accurate reception, eliciting critical approach, and then clarification.